The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. shall ever die. I am the first and the last and I am the living one. I was dead and now I am alive forevermore. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised. In his great mercy, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, he gave us new birth into a living hope, the hope of an inheritance reserved in heaven, which nothing can destroy or spoil or wither. Christ was raised to life, the first fruits of the harvest of the dead. As in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be brought to life. As we have worn the likeness of the earthly, so we shall wear the likeness of the heavenly. He will transfigure our humble bodies, and give them a form like that of his own glorious body. Sown a perishable thing, it is raised imperishable. Sown in humiliation, it is raised in glory. Sown in weakness, it is raised in power. Sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? Thanks be to God. He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Worthy is the Lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honour and glory and blessing. To him be glory and dominion for ever. Amen.
and welcome to our worship on the web for Easter Sunday. We're going to now have our reading from the Daily Watchword. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus chapter 33 verse 14. The Lord said, My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And the hymn verse, he said, Freely, freely you have received, freely, freely give. Go in my name, and because you believe, others will know that I live. And the New Testament reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 14 and verse 19. Jesus said, because I live, you also will live. And a quote from Dietrich Bonhoeffer. God does not give us everything we want, but he does fulfill his promises leading us along the best and straightforward path to, his, to himself. Throughout our service on Easter Sunday, I have written and prepared three monologues that take us through the different aspects of the Holy Week and Easter Sunday story, as told by three of the main characters throughout the story. First, we will hear from Pontius Pilate, and this has been performed by Dominic McGrath who is a friend of mine from the Crouch End Players Amateur Dramatic Society. Then we will hear from Mary Magdalene, as performed by Lauren King Yambolo, who is a member at the Harsden Congregation. Finally, we will hear from Simon Peter, which will be performed by myself. I hope that these three stories will help bring the wonderful Passion Week story to life. But now, we're going to hear the readings from the Passion Week and Easter Tide readings as read by members of the Holmesy Moravian Church. The Resurrection As the first day of the week was dawning, there was suddenly a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. Jesus appears to the women. At early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. Mary Magdalene saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. When the sun had risen, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message to you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Report of the God while they were going, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests everything that had happened. After the priests had assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You must say, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. 
So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story is still told among the Jews to this day. Peter and John at the tomb. Mary Magdalene ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying, the, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, amazed at what had happened. Jesus appears to Mary, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus was lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you weeping? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Emmaus. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days. He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of the group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and where they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that, it was, that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, 
Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So we went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sights. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning with it within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Jesus appears to the disciples. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. The doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked. And he said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said that, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still alive, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Jesus appears to Thomas. Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have yet have come to believe. By the lake. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel 
of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just days after just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were and now they were not able to hold it in to hold it in because there were so many fish that disciple whom jesus loved said to peter it is the lord when simon peter heard that it was the lord he put on some clothes for he was naked and he jumped into the lake but the other disciples came in the boat dragging the net full of fish for they were not far from the land only about a hundred yards off when they had gone ashore they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread jesus said to them bring some fish and that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew that it was the Lord. Peter Restored When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to him, if it is my will, that he remain until I come. What is that to you? Follow me. So the rumour spread in the community that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die. But if it is my will that he re remain until I come, what is that to you? The Mission to the World now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had directed them. 
When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of age. Epilogue. There are also many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. For these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And that through believing, you may have a life in his name. Thank you very much to those of you who have read for us today. To Sister Jackie Morton, Brother Alfonso Peters, Brother Stedroy Lambert, Sister Sonia Pazoa, Brother Carl Skeppel and Sister Annette Wolford. The following party political broadcast is brought to you by the Roman Empire. Caesar thanks you for your attention. So I guess you're all waiting to hear my take on this Jesus bloke then, yes? Waiting to hear my side of the story. I honestly can't believe that such a relatively minor blip in my career should be raked over and over again. But, well, for the last time, here's how it all happened. It was a typically hot and smelly day in Jerusalem. I really hated that place. I longed for the glories of Rome and to escape from this toilet full of discontented rebels and pushy religious leaders from a religion I didn't even follow. But there were worse places in the empire and I certainly was anxious not to get sent there. You see, I'd heard on the grapevine that I was one slip up away from being shipped off to somewhere awful, like Britannia. You see, I'd made a few decisions that the Empire hadn't liked, and yeah, one or two people had been killed in the process. But what Rome really feared was a revolution in Jerusalem. Anyway, while I was relaxing in the baths, my messenger boy came up to me and said that a large crowd of Jews was demanding to see me. I got up, I got dressed and went out to see what all the fuss was about. They brought a man with them, Jesus of Nazareth. I'd heard of him, of course. Few people hadn't. But as far as I was concerned, he was just a harmless teacher. <laughs> uh, a bit of a, an amusing distraction, who nevertheless did say some interesting things. I'd heard rumours that he'd healed people. But I didn't believe that, of course. Oh. Just a bunch of superstitious mumbo-jumbo, if you ask me. But the crowd was angry, so I had to do something. They presented him, along with a list of things that they said he'd done. It was quite a list. It was longer than the route of a marathon in Londinium. Some of the things were old, but some of the things I hadn't heard of before. They said that he'd been working against the empire. They said this man has been perverting the people and forbidding us from paying taxes to the emperor. And that he was saying himself that he was the Messiah, a king. Well, that stuff about taxes was a load of rubbish to start with. 
one of my spies was in the region where he was speaking and reported that Jesus had actually been encouraging people to pay their taxes. I knew from what they were saying that he was probably just an innocent man because their facts didn't add up. But what could I do? I knew that because he was a Galilean, I could ship him off to Herod, hoping that he would deal with him. But no, he came back faster than you could say. Thanks for nothing, Herod. So I knew I'd have to do something myself. I was trapped. What could I do? I tried to advise him to say something to help himself. But he seemed intent on being convicted. Even knowing that the penalty would be death. I even offered the crowd a choice between Jesus or Barabbas. They could free Jesus or Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a nasty, evil and dangerous man. But the crowd chose Barabbas. So, with them shouting, crucify him, crucify him, I got up, I washed my hands of this whole mess and I gave in. I had no choice. The crowd were on the verge of a riot and if I hadn't done what I'd done, I would have been flung off to some far off cesspit for sure, if I was lucky. So, I have the blood of another innocent man on my hands. So what? If I hadn't given in, things would have been much worse. So spare me your critical looks, your chorus of disapproval. It wasn't my fault. Now, let us say the confession of faith. I believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who created all things and was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. I believe in God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He rescued us from the domain of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his dear Son. He has conferred on us in Christ every spiritual blessing and made us fit to share the heritage of God's people in the realm of light. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. From him and through him and for him all things exist, and we through him. He became flesh and lived among us, taking the form of a servant, Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of Man. He was tested in every way, as we are yet without sin. He spoke of what he knew, and testified to what he had seen, to all who put their trust in him, he gave the right to become children of God. Here is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. And on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. This is my Lord who loves me and gave himself for me. I believe in the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and whom our Lord Jesus Christ sent after he went away to be our comforter and be with us forever. He comes to the aid of our weakness 
affirming that we are God's children. He floods our hearts with God's love and makes our bodies his holy temple. He works in us the will of God, giving to each one gifts as he chooses. Glory to God and the Church of Jesus Christ, the holy universal Christian Church, in the communion of saints, at all times and for ever and ever. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. day of my life. Seeing him hanging there, the man whom we'd all loved and respected, hanging there on that cross, a broken and discarded man. What was his crime? All he ever did was speak of love and forgiveness and now he hung there like a common criminal. I've been a follower of his for some time and we were all like one big family. We travel the length and breadth of this country and others. I'm sure you know some of the stories. How could you not? He got on quite a reputation and wherever we went, crowds of people followed. But it wasn't these times you treasured the most, no. It was the times that you won't have heard of. Those times we spent away from the crowds. Those are the moments I treasured the most. We'd all just sit and talk and we used to laugh. Oh, how we used to laugh. Those moments are so special now because unlike the crowd in Jerusalem, we had stayed true by his side. I was there that Sunday when the crowds greeted him like a conquering king, waving their palm branches in the air. Those hypocrites. We were all so happy that day to see Jesus finally get the recognition he deserved. It was such an amazing experience. I mean, we were getting used to big crowds around him, but there was something different about it this time. Something felt different in the air. Jesus was never one to seek or even relish his kind of attention, but even for him, he seemed different, quiet and thoughtful. I wonder if he knew what was coming next. I refused to go into Pilate's courtyard where Jesus was on display, but I heard their shouts, no longer, hallelujah and hosanna but crucify him crucify him you can hear the hatred in their voices so he was condemned to die like a common criminal on the cross at golgotha i had to go i had to see my lord my master my friend hanging there helplessly but despite this desperate scene Despite the people's betrayal of him, I heard him say something incredible. He said, Father, forgive them. Forgive them, Father. I could hardly believe it, but yet it made sense knowing who he was. Seeing the things he'd done, but still, even knowing that, it was incredible that he would say with his last few breaths, forgive them then it was all over. The guards spoke about 
They're surprised at how quickly it died, but me, I was relieved. I was glad that this terrible suffering and betrayal were now over. A few days later, um, I went to the tomb where he lay to anoint his body. And I found that the big stone covering the tomb had been moved. I had no idea who had moved it, or even why. And as I looked inside, I saw that his body was no longer there. I panicked and I went to old Simon Peter and one of the other disciples and said, his body has been taken. I went back to the tomb and you never believe what happened next, but it is the truth. As sure as I am sitting here now, I saw two angels. They said Jesus hadn't been moved, but that he had risen from the dead. I didn't know what to say. Well, how would you? I just burst into uncontrollable tears. Then I saw a man I assumed to be the gardener. I know now with hindsight that that was wrong, but I could barely see through the tears. It was when he just looked at me, his eyes filled with compassion and said, Mary, I knew who it was. It was him, Jesus my master and my friend standing there in front of me once again. I'm telling you now, seeing him there in all his glory with compassion in his eyes was the best day of my life. Let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Son of God, Saviour of the world, be gracious unto us. By your agony and passion, by your dying words, by your cross and reconciling death, by your rest in the grave, bless and comfort us, good Lord. By your triumphant resurrection, by your appearing to the disciples, by your glorious ascension, by your sending the Holy Spirit, by your word and sacraments, by your abiding presence, by your coming again in glory, bless and comfort us, good Lord. Eternal God and Father, by whose power our Lord Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, with the whole company of your people in heaven and on earth, we rejoice and give thanks that he who was dead is alive again and lives forevermore, that he is with us now and always, and that nothing can part us from your love in him, that he has opened the way to your kingdom and brought us the gift of eternal life. All glory, praise and thanksgiving, all worship, honour and love be yours, almighty and everlasting God, in time and for all eternity. Amen. I'm a failure, a disappointment, and I'm sorry. 
That's what I wanted to say when I reached the tomb where my friend and master Jesus now lay. I'd let him down. I'd fallen short. And I thought my only chance to make things right had gone. See, there was always something special about Jesus. From the moment we first met down at the harbour, I just was drawn to him. There was this sort of magnetism that meant when he called me to be a fisher of man, I never left his side. Everywhere he went, I went. Well, at least that was until the other week. It'd been a crazy week. Full of extreme highs and the lowest of lows. We arrived into Jerusalem with people shouting, Hosanna! And the, it seemed like the world had gone crazy. We were welcomed and it was just so exciting. It was a whirlwind of emotion. and We felt like we were untouchable. Then things started to change. One of my lasting memories is always going to be that meal that we shared together. This last time of friendship where we would talk and laugh. We used to laugh. But before the meal started, things went a bit strange. <laughs> quite often happened. See, Jesus took his place at the table. He took the bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. And he took the cup with the wine and said, this is my blood shed for you. I mean, at the time, we'd no idea what he was on about. The blood and the bread and the wine and not a clue. After that, he told us he was going to be betrayed by one of us. One of us, one of his, one of his closest friends, the people that had walked miles and miles. And I felt this burning urge within me to declare my loyalty. Lord, Lord, not me, definitely not me. I will do whatever it takes. I will be persecuted. I will be killed before I even betray you. But as usual, Jesus knew me better than I knew myself. He said to me, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Surely not, never, never going to happen. And as usual, Jesus was right. I was frightened. I was scared, but that was no excuse. Jesus had been arrested. Judas betrayed him. And it felt like the world was just starting to crumble in. I was standing around where the trial was taking place. Standing by a fire to keep warm and one of the women there said, you're one of his followers, aren't you? I said, no. Two other times people asked me, you're one of his followers, aren't you? You're the guy I've seen you. I said, no, each time, it's not me. Then on the third time, I heard a cock crowing in the distance, and I knew. I knew I'd betrayed him. As you know, Jesus was crucified. I saw my best friend, my master, my mentor, just hanging there, dying. And I just I felt so guilty. I thought I'd lost my chance to say goodbye, to say I'm sorry. So when they laid him in the tomb, 
I made my way to go and see a final few words or something. I don't know. As I'm on my way there, I see Mary Magdalene running towards me. Her face is panic-stricken. She's frightened. She's, she says they've taken him. They've taken him away. So I ran. I ran faster. Faster than I've ever ran before. And he was gone. There was nothing there. Just the, the linen where he laid his head and the, the burial cloths. Just there. never felt so low my last chance to say sorry had gone but the most incredible thing had happened and I didn't realise at the time I mean how could I <laughs> he wasn't dead even he, he wasn't missing he'd risen from the dead like Lazarus beforehand he, he was alive again <sighs> I mean now it, it it seems like obvious because he'd said this was probably going to happen, but we didn't believe it at the time. He'd appeared to us several times and we knew it was true. And then one day we were out fishing. Me, Thomas, Nathaniel and a few of us. See, we, <laughs> we hadn't caught anything. We weren't really there to catch fish. We were there to... Just sort of do something familiar, you know? Then we saw a man on the distance, on the shore. We couldn't quite make out who it was, but he shouted out to us and said, try your net on the other side. And we did. We caught so many fish. <laughs> More fish than I'd seen in my life. We couldn't really reel them in, like there was just so many. And I knew, and I said, it's the Lord. I threw some clothes on and I dived into the water. I swam to make it to the shore. This could be it. This could be my chance. He was there again. And we sat and we talked. And we ate. We ate the fish. We cooked it on a fire and he ate with us. And best of all, for, best of all for me, I, I got a chance to say sorry. He asked me three times, do you love me? And three times I said yes, each time getting more and more desperate, more and more anxious to prove to him that I, I loved him and I was sorry. And each time he said, feed my sheep. Three times... Three times I denied him, three times I betrayed him, and now three times I told him I loved him. I was restored, I was forgiven. And not only that, not only that, he asked me to feed his sheep, to carry on his legacy, to, to build the church upon me, the rock. I knew I'd been forgiven. The thing is, this forgiveness that I received, this grace, it's not just for me. It's for everyone, even for you. And when you see and feel the grace and the love of Christ, who can forgive even me who turned his back on him and betrayed him, feels fantastic that grace that amazing grace that love that forgiveness is a gift for you and for everyone thanks be to God we're going to finish by singing the glorious hymn thine be the glory risen conquering son Is the victory thou our death has won? 
angels in bright raiment rolled the stone away. Kept the folded grave clothes where thy body lay. Thine be the glory with and conquering sun. In the seas the victory thou art at the one. Though Jesus meets us risen from the tomb, lovingly he greets us scatters fears and gloom. Let the church with gladness hymns of triumph sing. For her Lord now liveth, death has lost its sting. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory, thou art dead. We doubt the glorious Prince of Life. Life is not without thee, aid us in our strife. Make us more than conquerors through thy deathless love. Bring us safe through Jordan to thy home above. Thine be thy glory. Peace and conquering sun, and the seas of our victory, thou art dead as one. Grace be to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the King of the rulers of the earth. To him who loves us, who freed us from our sins by his blood, and who made us to be a kingdom, to be priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen.